We are kicking off with CM Punk, who's been missing from WWE TV for over a month, but this week, Madison Square Garden announced that Punk will be part of the annual December 26th live event. No opponent was announced in the graphic, which sees Punk wearing his customary logo t-shirt, though Sportskeeda's Dr. Chris Featherstone has reported Punk will be wrestling. This night will mark the start of WWE's holiday tour, and we'll also see a show at the Vistar Veterans Memorial Arena in Jacksonville. Punk will certainly be a highlight on the MSG show, and the best in the world has also been announced for the live event on December 29th at the Allstate Arena in Chicago. Once again, no opponent was named, and it's still not clear if Punk might work Pittsburgh or the Tampa SmackDown on the 27th or Baltimore on the 28th. There's a Detroit live event and Raw on Houston on the 30th to wrap up the tour, and it's again unclear if Punk will be at either, but fans could be seeing Punk back on TV soon enough. Featherstone adds that Punk has been discussed for the upcoming Saturday night's main event card, with the belief being that he'll be a major draw for the return of the show. The 37th Saturday night's main event will air from the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum in Long Island, New York on December 14th, with a simulcast to air on NBC and stream on Peacock on the same night. This will be the first Saturday night's main event since 2008, a show that Punk was a guest commentator on, and it'll be held at the same location the inaugural event was held on 37 years ago. But who would you like to see Punk step in the ring with when he next wrestles? Give your picks for the former world champion's next opponent below. As reported in yesterday's video, next week's Raw has already been taped, and on that show, and the one that's aired, Sami Zayn tried to recruit a fifth man for war games. Zayn approached Seth Rollins, who made clear that he wanted no part in aligning with Roman Reigns, but a social media post from Sami has teased that potential reunion. On Instagram, Sami shared a picture from years ago when he was in a segment with Rollins and a pre-travel chief Roman Reigns, and sees Sami putting his fist in to do the classic shield pose. Sami captioned the image, the more things change, as the classic saying ends with the more they stay the same, implying that these three men could indeed be on the same side soon. Do you think Rollins joining Sami, the Usos, and most notably Reigns is the right call? Share your thoughts down in the comments section. In just over two weeks, WWE will host its Survivor Series PLE, and as one of the big four shows of the year, fans are eager to see how Cody Rhodes factors into things. So far though, Rhodes hasn't been announced for any match, and fans hoping to see the undisputed WWE Champion in Vancouver should prepare to be bitterly disappointed. Sportskeeda's Dr. Chris Featherstone reports that as of now, Cody does not have a match for Survivor Series, despite previous plans for him to be the fifth man for the OG Bloodline. Rhodes' absence from the show was first discussed earlier this month when Cody shared his schedule for November, and fans noticed that Survivor Series wasn't listed among the shows. Are you disappointed that Cody will miss Survivor Series, or do you think a last-minute change will facilitate a role for him in Vancouver? Let us know down below in the comments. Speaking of Survivor Series, the show will see an episode of SmackDown air the night prior as usual, but this won't be a live event. On Wrestling Observer Radio, it was shared that the November 29th show will be taped on the 22nd so that the roster and crew have more Thanksgiving time with their families. With Thanksgiving falling on the 28th this year, WWE wants everyone involved with SmackDown to have more time off before making the trip to Canada for Survivor Series. This move will certainly give those involved something to be thankful about, as the roster and those behind the scenes will have more time to relax with their nearest and dearest this month. On this week's Raw, it was confirmed that Gunter will defend the World Heavyweight title at Survivor Series against the man he won the gold from back in SummerSlam, Damian Priest. This much-anticipated match will take place on November 30th in Vancouver, British Columbia, but this week, WWE made a serious production botch when promoting the match. In promotional images for the match, Gunter was seen holding the Intercontinental title, not the gold he currently holds, and this error didn't go unnoticed by fans. It's baffling how an error such as this made it all the way through production without a single person in WWE pointing out that the graphic featured a completely different title. Gunter broke records as Intercontinental Champion and no doubt plans to do the same as World Champion, and hopefully this botch won't be made by the production team again. Over to NXT now as Julia and Stephanie Vaquer survived the best offensive flurry of Lash Legend and Jakara Jackson before getting the win with stereo knee strikes to Jackson. While this did not quite reach its peak, all of these women delivered in the opener and teased a much bigger match down the line with greater stakes up for grabs. 
Jackson and Legend have improved tremendously in recent months, and it showed as they stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with veteran talent, albeit new to WWE, who let the metaphor duo shine. The right women won as they prepare for the Iron Survivor Challenge, but NXT should not lose track of Legend and Jackson as one of the top women's tag teams in WWE. After the finish, interviewer Blake Howard asked Vecare and Julia about the Iron Survivor Challenge and both welcomed fighting one another in that match. The Iron Survivor Challenge will be a unique test for Julia and Vacare as they have to adapt to the unique stipulation that they will not have had any experience with outside WWE. With that said, both women have been highlighted by NXT for a reason, and fans can expect the two veterans to fit nicely in a match that is about endurance as much as it's about winning. Are you excited to see Julia and Vacare advance to the Iron Survivor Challenge? What do you make of this tag team match? Share your views down below. Cora Jade and Sol Ruka went back and forth in the Iron Survivor Challenge qualifier, but an accidental connection on the turnbuckle resulted in something of an upset. Jade connected with the turnbuckle with her previously injured knee, setting up the former tag team champion for a Soul Snatcher, and it'll be Ruka who advances to NXT Deadline. This match deserved more than the three minutes it had based on the talent and the action, as Ruka and Jade had chemistry and were moving smoothly through this before the result. It was genuinely shocking that Jade lost as she'd been set up as a potential NXT Women's Champion since her return, including an established rivalry with Julia. Ruka has the talent to stand out in the Iron Survivor Challenge, but she is not going to win in this field, and hopefully NXT has some strong ideas for the heel side of the match now that Jade is out. Backstage, Brindley Reese and Dion Lennox encouraged Carmen Petrovich to team with Ashanti The Adonis for a mixed tag match next week. At this time, a match hasn't been officially announced, but fans can expect it to take place soon enough in the latest development of the Adonis Petrovich angle. In a segment, Ava advised all of the NXT Tag Division to step up and earn a shot at the NXT Tag Team Championships, naming no one as the next contenders yet. It's somewhat odd for a segment's gist to be that no one in the Tag Division currently deserves a shot at the champions and hardly makes the division look good. Fraxium have been one of the most entertaining tag teams fans have seen in years, and we'll have to see who earns the title shot and whether they'll be the one to end the pair's reign. The last time we saw Miro in an AEW ring, it was at World's End 2023, where he defeated Andrade, and in September, it was reported that he'd requested his release. If that release isn't granted, then he's locked into his contract until around Spring 2026, but the former TNT champion did resurface on social media this week. Coastal Championship Wrestling shared a photo online of Miro at their training facility and thanked him for stopping by, and Gangrel was also a part of this training session. As for what this training session means for Miro, only time will tell, and what do you want to see next for the Bulgarian? Share your idea down below. Right now, Jon Moxley is riding high as the AEW World Champion and has plans to reshape AEW alongside his allies as part of the Death Riders. While speaking on Wrestling Observer Radio, Brian Alvarez revealed that Moxley has full creative control over his new Death Riders faction, though Tony Khan still approves things. While Khan still has the final say, Moxley is largely in charge of driving the direction and impact of the faction, with the goal of bringing fresh energy to AEW through this new persona. AEW has no plans to add more members to the Death Riders at this time, as all plans right now are leading to Moxley's title defense with Orange Cassidy in the main event of Full Gear. Fans are anticipating that Moxley's faction will ruin Cassidy's chances as it's clear AEW will continue this angle well into 2025, so we'll have to see what kind of direction they'll take. Do you feel the Death Riders is the best thing about AEW right now? Please share your thoughts and feedback in the comments section below. In Men's Iron Survivor Challenge action, Wes Lee was shocked by the resilience of Cedric Alexander, but did not lose steam, and he finally sealed the victory with a running Meteora. Lee and Alexander fought hard in this qualifier, though it was clear throughout that Lee was going to win, as even with surprise kickouts, Alexander was never close to a victory. With that said, predictability isn't a bad thing when the right person wins, and Lee handled this win and is now the clearest favorite in the Iron Survivor Challenge. The disappointing element of this match was the finish, which seemed to indicate that Lee is moving away from the cardiac kick, while his running Meteora didn't look like a strong finish. What's your take on the first piece to the Men's Iron Survivor Challenge match this week? Let us know in the comments below. Sean Spears found Tony D'Angelo at his restaurant and challenged him to put his North American Championship on the line against Brooks Jensen. 
The Don called Spears weird and encouraged Jensen to think for himself, but the heels left without coming to blows, leaving D'Angelo to think about the offer that was made. Spears and Jensen entered a car which was revealed to be driven by Nico Vance, teasing that Sean Spears and his unique methods now have another disciple. A number one contenders match for the NXT title was set up during this week's show, though this match will see much more than a shot at the gold at stake. Trick Williams came out to address the crowd about his loss last week, which saw him pinned by Ridge Holland during the tag team main event in the ECW arena. Williams attempted to call Holland out, but Chase used music hit, and Andre Chase came out through the crowd and told the reigning NXT champion that he still has beef with Holland. Holland's music then hit after Williams began to offer Chase a title shot, and he listed off his recent accomplishments, and Chase said he wanted another match. Chase was even willing to put the entire university on the line, and while Holland initially said he didn't care about the school, Trick Williams had a match in mind. Williams set up a number one contenders match for next week, and should Chase lose, then Chase U will be done, and he and his students will have to go their separate ways. Chase agreed to the terms before Holland clocked him, but Williams had the babyface's back, sending Holland to the mat and hitting the Chase U stomps alongside Chase to end things. This was oddly scripted, despite Trick completely selling the audience on the match to come, and it was also odd that Trick was seemingly able to make a match with no role by Ava. It also made little sense after months of turmoil and growth for Chase to offer up Chase U like it was nothing, but nevertheless, the result was a great sell for next week's show. The Professor's entire legacy is on the line to get the biggest title opportunity of his career, and the rematch should be significantly better than the ambulance match at Halloween Havoc, just from stakes alone. As their rivalry continues to build, Adriana Rizzo tried to bring the fight to Nikita Lyons, but ultimately the Lioness got the win with the Lions roar. Rizzo did get payback though as she blasted Lion with a crowbar to the back afterwards, but their lack of chemistry resulted in a match that was far from engaging. Perhaps the stipulation match would go better, potentially with the crowbar involved, but nothing worked here, though there was the slightest of silver linings. Rizzo did actually look better in stretches than she has before, but she just could not get on the same page with Lions, who has struggled consistently since returning. Lions still needed the win here as Rizzo has yet to show she is ready for a serious push, but unless things change for Lions and soon, a push for her may also be out of the question. Now Darby Allen isn't just a wrestler in AEW, but he's a symbol of ambition and defiance, and his unconventional approach to wrestling and loyalty to AEW has won countless fans over. Allen has credited AEW for pushing him to where he is today, but while fans may call Allen AEW World Champion, one label he refuses to wear is Superstar. Speaking to Emil in a match, Allen explained his distaste for WWE's label, as he said, that's why with wrestling, I think being a spokesperson for the younger kids, they can see me and relate. I'm not just coming into AEW and being like, yo, everything's perfect, I'm a superstar. Superstar is such a stupid term. We're like, you're down here, we're up here, we're superstars. I'm one of you who just made it, you know what I mean? And you can make it too. Allen is known for his down-to-earth persona and wants to distance himself from the larger-than-life label which WWE uses to differentiate its roster to wrestlers from other companies. In a follow-up interview on the Ethan, Lou, and Large Dave show, Allen provided further context to his statement, emphasizing that his life and values extend far beyond wrestling. He said, The thing is with me and wrestling, I'm a big wrestling fan, don't get me wrong, but my life does not begin and end with wrestling. I have so many outside hobbies and goals that I want to achieve in life, I don't even have a TV at my house. I think it promotes laziness. Whether he's jumping cars or blowing things out of his backyard, Allen lives by his own terms, which goes a long way to explain his opinion on Superstar. He added, When you think of, hey, I'm a superstar, you're pretty much telling your fans that you're better than them and you're way above them. Instead, Allen wants to be seen as a fan who dared to chase his dream and succeeded, and Vince McMahon famously insisted on the term, citing WWE talent as more than stars. Allen's statement sparked mixed opinions within the wrestling community, with Booker T saying on his Hall of Fame podcast that Allen had missed the purpose behind the term. For Booker, it's a strategic part of WWE's branding, designed to attract and engage fans, and WWE's brand has shifted since the company became a global entertainment giant. Other branding examples include opting for sports entertainment over pro wrestling, and the audiences who watch WWE Weekly aren't just fans, but part of a WWE universe. 
Those terms are still in use today, as is Superstar, though since Triple H took over as CCO in 2022, some of the previously banned terms have resurfaced on TV. Terms like fans and pro wrestling are now occasionally heard on TV, with Michael Cole declaring his love for professional wrestling at WrestleMania 40 after Cody Rhodes finished his story. The evolution in WWE's banned words list reflects changes in leadership and direction, but the term superstar remains a part of the branding, symbolizing the company's global appeal. That's in spite of fans and talent debating its meaning and impact. And do you believe the superstar branding is terrible? Please share your thoughts and feedback down below. During last week's NXT in the ECW arena, Francine was spotted in the crowd in a fun moment for her, but a much smaller role compared to other Extreme alum. The Dudley Boys, Dawn Marie, Rhino, and Rob Van Dam all had more significant roles during the show, leaving fans to wonder why exactly the Queen of Extreme was left out. On her Eyes Up Here podcast, Francine shed light on what happened and said that she was reached out to on October 17th by John Cone, who's now part of Talent Relations. Cone spoke about crossing paths with Francine as a referee in 2006 for the ECW relaunch and offered her the chance to guest referee the match between Lola Vice and Jada Parker. Francine recalled discussing the offer with her husband, who raised concern about past health issues, including five surgeries on her abdomen. Francine realized that the demands of being a referee might be too much, and after informing Cone of her limitations, he assured her that Creative would explore other roles for her. Instead of Francine, Dawn Marie officiated the match, while Francine pitched being a guest timekeeper as well as another spot for the show. She explained that on the Tuesday night before the show, all she knew was that she was booked, but had no idea what she'd be doing, as there hadn't been an update for two weeks. The same night, Johnny Russo reached out with a script for a backstage interview, but Francine had to turn it down after she'd lost her voice. Francine was embarrassed by the unfortunate timing and said she'd completely understand if WWE wanted to pull her from the show, but the production team insisted she attend. Eventually, it was decided that Francine could sit front row like WWE does with a lot of legends, and the team said they'd see how she was in the morning of the show and go from there. Francine appeared in the crowd, and given WWE had already included her in the show's opening and pulling her out last minute wasn't an option at this point. Francine said she was surprised that her name wasn't announced, but in the end, she was able to have some role on the show, despite her health issues and losing her voice. What did you make of Francine's return to the ECW arena? Do you wish she'd done more, or was seeing her in the crowd enough? Share your thoughts down below. In another Iron Survivor qualifier, Lexus King got frustrated late into his match with Javon Evans after giving the young OG too much leeway, and Evans won with a super kick and corner springboard corkscrew. King and Evans had a match of back and forth, littered with near falls on both sides, eventually ending with a clean win for the latter, and shared a sign of respect after the match. This was in direct contrast to how Wes Lee had qualified before, and like Lee, Evans will be entering his first Iron Survivor Challenge match at Deadline. Kalani Jordan faced Fallon Henley in a title rematch from Halloween Havoc, but the interference of JC Jane and Jasmine Nix allowed Henley to get the win and retain. This was better than the Halloween Havoc match, which was more about the moment than the action, and proved the chemistry between the two. This week's match saw that chemistry taken to another level in what was hopefully not their last encounter, and while Henley couldn't lose here, NXT has a clear trust in Jordan's skills. She sold why she couldn't regain her gold while also making Henley look much more like a dangerous threat as a champion. The promise of Fatal Influence is finally playing out as all three women have leveled up with the championship involved. Since leaving WoW and claims of bullying and misconduct in the promotion, the Tonga Twins have been making waves online and had their presence felt during this week's NXT. During the show, fans in the back row of the Capitol Wrestling Center held signs reading, We Want the Tonga Twins, in quite the movement for the female tag team. Whether this momentum results in a contract being offered only time will tell, and would you like to see the Tonga Twins in WWE? Let us know below. Back to WWE and Grayson Waller has made a name for himself as one of the most outspoken heels in WWE, with not even his boss Triple H being safe from the Aussies' barbs. Earlier this year, the game revealed new WWE tag team titles only to be disrespected by both Waller and Austin Theory, who were the champions at the time of the segment. Speaking to Insight this week, Waller reflected on the moment and made clear he has no problem disrespecting Triple H, saying that the people are too disrespectful to the legends. Waller can appreciate what's come before him, but would rather focus on the present and his time, and said it was fun to have such a serious moment and not take it seriously. 
A-Town Down Under has since lost the gold, but that's done little to humble the self-professed Aussie icon, and don't expect him to be respectful the next time a WWE legend is in town. In July, Tyler Bate tore his pectoral muscle during a match in NXT, and this week, the inaugural United Kingdom champion shared a photo of himself looking unrecognizable. Bate has cut his long hair and shaved his facial hair, and fans eagerly await the return of the British star after this setback in his career. And we're ending with Tamina Snuka, who debuted on WWE's main roster in 2010, but fans haven't seen anything from the former women's tag team champion in a very long time. With her most recent match being in February 2023, many fans are wondering whether Tamina's even still with WWE, and now we know more about her situation. Fightful Select reports that Tamina is still signed to a deal, but there's no creative pitches for her, and she also isn't listed internally on any kind of talent roster. It was in July of this year that Tamina was removed from the active roster, and while she is still a WWE superstar, she's not one fans should expect to see in the ring anytime soon.